G'day, it's Carl Thompson here from StorageCraft. In this tutorial, we're going to go over the latest Shadow Protect SPX interface. So firstly, let's take a look at where we can download the latest version from. Under the support menu on our website, we go down to software downloads and updates. At the top of this, we have the latest version here, 6.5.2. That's the current release of SPX. In this demonstration, we're actually going to take a look at the release candidate of SPX 6.7. So we'll talk about a couple of new features that are coming uh, very shortly as well. So we have the options here to have the 64-bit installer or the 32-bit version. We also have a group policy deployment version of 64-bit or 32-bit. Uh, if we take a quick look at the um, silent install instructions, we've obviously got details here on how to leverage our GPO installer. But just scrolling up a little bit here, with the uh, latest 6.5 and newer releases, you've, you've got the ability to just install um, the, the GUI for virtual boot or mount tools. Uh, that doesn't require any licensing. Um, or if we want to actually run a backup on the machine, it will also need the full backup agent as well. So you've got flexible custom installer options. So let's go and jump in and take a look at what that consists of. So again, this is available from SPX 6.5 or newer has the option to do the backup agent. Um, so if it's on your backup server, perhaps you just want to put the console and tools, and that will allow us to mount images, um, you know, look at image chains, or just perform virtual boot disaster recovery. So that's quite cool to have. It's also got some um, new features, such as the management console, where I can view all of my other machines on the network. Um, or, or likewise, perhaps if I just want to back up a server and don't want any console on it, I could actually disable that feature as well. So this would just be... Um, the agents installed, the console would be managed from another machine, or you would leverage our shadow control. So install is very easy. Um, we also have an option through shadow control. Um, so shadow control is our free uh, monitoring and management appliance. This has the ability to do a push install of our software. So in here, we can simply push out the SPX software or update to the latest version. Uh, for example, here, I can see this version's on an older 6.3.0 release. We could instantly upgrade that to 6.5.2. So lots of different ways for easy, um, you know, large scale deployments if we need to. So let's jump in and actually look at what the console looks like, how we can leverage this to perform a lot of functions. SPX is a lot more intuitive than the older Shadow Protect 5 interface, so I want to take you through some of the really cool features that are in here. The first time you log in, you'll get prompted for the login screen. So this is simply local administrative user on as one of your Windows accounts. There's no particular SPX user account. This is running as a local system service account. So we just need to log in with any administrative account to the local system. Um, from here, the first time you log in, this little help overlay pops up for the first time. And this points out some of the key features. We've got the ability to create a backup destination or create a backup job. Down here, we get a summary of a selected job that gets listed in this uh, white space here, which we'll take a look at. And then over here on the right, we've got the job timeline. Now, the job timeline is really cool. This is actually a patent feature by StorageCraft. It's a really cool way to navigate the backup, see what's going on. Um, and then based on any job that you select, we can see the available images um, and, and the logs based on what's just happened. So let's take a quick look um, through some of these features. Uh, firstly, to create a backup job, some people like to initially start with creating a destination. So a destination is where the backups are going to go. Uh, it's also used from SPX console to perhaps see other servers backups as well. So you, it's quite common to have a lot of different destinations in here, um, particularly on a backup management or a backup server. So network share. Um, connect using credentials. And this is key, is your, your backup share, if you've got a share on the network that all your backups are going to, that should be locked down and only accessible by a particular user account that's programmed into SPX. We don't want anyone mapping network drives to that share um, or, or browsing that over Windows Explorer because that opens up risks for things like CryptoLocker to get in there and, and corrupt those images. So it's a good idea to secure your shares on the network so that only SPX is able to communicate to it. And we'll talk about how SPX makes that a lot more secure now because we can actually directly mount backups based on these destinations rather than having to go out to Windows Explorer and do that.
So you create your destination, you then click on the little shield here to go in and create a backup job. So this is you know, on a machine that you want to back up. We've obviously got the ability in shadow control to deploy SPX policies. So this would be a job that I define in here. But just taking a look at the SPX console itself, we would give it a name, select the destination, the comment, I like to put my name in here and perhaps the date or time or the role of the server because this comment's embedded into all of the backup images. And in five years time, I could perhaps see what that was all about. Um, we can then got options to select a scheme. So I could say I want to back up all volumes here. Uh, perhaps I don't need to include the system reserve volume here. Uh, and my E drive is actually greyed out because I've selected the E drive as the path. So obviously I can't back up the same location here. Uh, compression standard, uh, best is going to use up a little bit more compute um, and probably give you an extra 10% compression. But most people go with standard. Encryption is enabled by default, so you must enter a password. So you should have a, a good long key in here um, that will securely encrypt those backup images. So jumping over to the schedule, um, we're really just going to focus on the continuous incremental schedule. That has the biggest benefit today because leveraging Image Manager, we've got far greater retention capabilities. We've got included replication and pre-staging Head Start Restore capabilities. So by far the most common backup schedule is leveraging our continuous incremental schedule. So we've got the ability to choose whether we want to start the backup right now or perhaps kick it off uh, later this evening. Um, I can choose to have a Monday to Friday. I want to back up you know, 24 hours a day, uh, perhaps every 15 minutes. And I could get a little bit fancy and maybe add another schedule in that says on Saturday and Sunday, perhaps I just want to back up hourly. Now something cool you'll note here is the backup time, the time that this starts from here on both of these schedules, we now default to just off the hour, so five minutes past the hour. So in Shadow Protect 6.7 is the first release that now will not default backup jobs to running on the hour. And there's problems with running backups on the hour because they can coincide with uh, other Windows scheduled tasks that might be running, um, or, or worse, more worst case scenario would be uh, previous versions. So um, Windows built-in Shadow Copy that runs, um, you know, on SPS servers that's pre-configured to 7 a.m. and 12 midday, and you don't want to run any other type of backup software at the same time as that uh, because it would have an issue or conflict with VSS. So now we're now not defaulting on the R just by default so that you can ensure that all your backups aren't going to um, have any conflict. It's also a good idea for multiple servers to maybe increment them a couple of minutes uh, different from each other so that they're not all backing up to the backup share at the same time. We've then got our typical advanced options here around uh, extra configuration settings. Most people are usually leaving these to default. So that's how easy it is to create a backup job. Uh, one of the new features in Shadow Protect 6.5 is the remote monitor. So for those of us that love the older Shadow Protect 5 interface, we had that management view. We've now got that back in SPX. So this gives us the ability to add in all the different machines on our network. And from one place, I can see the next backup time, when it last run, any recent failures. And from here, I can straight away connect onto a server and take a look at a particular console for a server. So looking at this server here, I'm just going to connect on to now, um, I can see a job that's already been pre-configured. This job's actually a shadow control policy. So on this particular server, it might not have the agent installed and I also never logged onto a console there. So I've either configured that through a remote console or in this case via shadow control. So this job is locked down. It's totally controlled by shadow control. So it can't be edited, disabled, deleted. Um, so this is a nice scalable solution when you do leverage the shadow control policy. But just taking a look at the rest of this console, this timeline is really cool. So if I just zoom out a little bit here, I can start to see all the different backups that have happened. So this is a gap overnight. This is the last backup we ran last night. Uh, the first one this morning, we can see the line, the vertical line here is higher because more data changed. So the first backup for each day on this server is generally quite high. This server's obviously had a bit of extra work that's happened around uh, later in the day. So let's take a look here at this time here. So um, three o'clock yesterday, perhaps the customer rings up in support and says, look, my server's running really slow. And I jump on the timeline and say, oh yeah, look, your actual server, something's happening in the background there. I can see a whole lot of data's changed and we've had to back that up. So it might not necessarily be that Shadow Protect's causing the slowness, but I can see on the timeline where, where my times of day are, where lots of data does change on a server. Um, if I keep going back, I can see the server doesn't back up over the weekend. So there's a bit of a gap there and so on. 
Now, this is, is it's really cool from a support perspective, I guess, to see what's going on. If there was any failures or missing files or differential or warnings, the color of the line would change. Likewise, if it was a really long backup, it would be a horizontally quite a longer, a thicker line on, on the timeline. So it's really cool to get that visibility. What's also really nice in the Shadow Protect interface is that when I select a job, I see the available recovery points uh, that were backed up at that time. So I can see here this last job, the C drive, incremental number 632. Straight from the console, I can get more information on the image. I could mount the image. So if I go mount, put in my encrypted password, I can mount this image and mount it as E drive as read only. So now, as I mentioned earlier, I don't have to go into Windows Explorer and expose those images to perhaps any type of ransomware on my machine. It's all managed through the SPX console. I've mounted that image uh, and I also get visibility up here, the little one it's indicating there in red that there's a mounted image left uh, mounted. So it's again, very intuitive interface now where I can go and dismount that. I can verify the image or I can go in and restore an entire volume. So obviously the C drive, I'm not gonna be able to restore that because it's booted off that, but perhaps a data volume, I could just do a simple restore straight from here. I've also got the ability for a one-off archival. Um, I could collapse the whole chain, the 632 incrementals back through whatever consolidated images into a single image. So, you know, that's kind of handy sometimes if people want to do a point in time archive. Now, one of the really cool things um, that people used to like in Shadow Protect 5 that never came into the SPX interface until recently in the SPX 6.5 was the ability to view the logs from the console. So based on selecting a job, we've now got this button here to view the job log. So when I download this, instead of giving us this huge log, it's going to represent the backup start time based on the job that I just selected. So it's far quicker now more than ever to very quickly see what's going on with a job because at the top of this file is the point in time that I just selected. So that's a great new feature that's come back into SPX that a lot of people really liked and struggled with a little bit early on uh, where we had to go into a hidden folder and, and pull out the whole log and start searching through it. So I'm really glad that that's come back. But these are some of the key features. If we take a look at the image chain browser that's uh, accessible either through viewing the image information or it's this button up here, the image chain browser. This is another really intuitive way to view my backups. So in the destinations, I've got pre-saved destinations as we looked at earlier, um, or I could browse to a local folder. So by selecting a pre-saved destination, it's gonna list all the base images. So typically with continuous, you're gonna see a base image for each volume. We select the volume, and then over here, we see all available recovery points. So I've got my base image, I've then got all of the image manager consolidated files. So I wouldn't see these in the timeline because they weren't backups, they're consolidated points in time. Uh, it's filtered by date at the top uh, and then based on backup size. So I'll just adjust my resolution here so we can see that. Uh, and if I scroll right down to the bottom, this is my most recent backup, the incremental 632 we were just looking at. I can see the size, the date that that was performed. So this is a really easy way to see what all of my available backup points are. And again, from here, I've got the options for virtual boot, mount, restore, test, or collapse to full. So I've got all of that capability straight from the interface. Again, I don't have to browse out to Windows Explorer. I don't have to sift through thousands of backup images, MD5, bitmap type files. It's very clean and intuitive way to see exactly what's going on. One of the other things SPX will do is it will periodically automatically scan the backup destinations and make sure that the shortest path of that backup chain is available. If there's any critical files missing, it will automatically initiate a self-healing incremental to try and repair my backups. So historically, we've really leveraged Image Manager to take full control of that. And obviously we need Image Manager to be doing that verification and consolidation, but we've built a few extra checks into SPX just to double check on what Image Manager is doing. And you'll get things like alerts to say, hey, um, we're not getting any consolidation of our backups. It's been over seven days and there's no consolidation. Perhaps you wanna check that the images are being managed in Image Manager. So there's a lot more smarts built into SPX now more than ever. Uh, and I guess finally, looking at some of the, the cool things in SPX, one of the options that's been introduced in SPX 6.7 is the ability to back up REFS volumes. So previously NTFS and, and FAT32 volumes, now we can support REFS. So that gives us the ability for 2016 Exchange SQL servers that Microsoft recommend those data volumes are REFS. 
that is now fully supported in SPX 6.7. Additionally, with Virtual Boot, we've got enhanced capabilities. So let's take a look at some of the new capabilities with Virtual Boot. Firstly, I just need to log back into uh, a local session to initiate Virtual Boot. So I'm just going to go onto the local console of SPX on the machine I'm connected to. And I'm going to go back into the image chain browser. This is generally the nicer way to see my various backup images um, because of, it's all filtered by date and time. So I select my most recent backup, select a virtual boot, put in my encrypted password, and it will bring across that volume and any other volume that was backed up at the same time into the virtual boot wizard. Now I generally don't need to include the recovery petition. We're going to deal with that as part of the virtual boot, but we want to include all of the data volumes. And I could chop and change if I want to roll back D drive perhaps a few hours ago, but still have the most recent C volume. So it's very flexible. Um, then we look at the options that are available. So traditionally with Shadow Protect 5, we've always had Oracle Virtual Boot uh, available. With SPX, uh, we early on launched the ability to rapidly virtualize into Hyper-V. Now the Hyper-V Virtual Boot has supported and currently does with 6.5 supports Windows Server 2012 R2. With SPX 6.7, it will now support Windows 10 and Windows Server 2016 with Hyper-V. So that's giving us a lot more flexibility about where we want to rapidly recover our backup images into. If we jump back into the support website, uh, sorry, on the downloads website, you'll note here we have the StorageCraft Virtual Boot Hyper-V plugin. So that plugin needs to be installed on the Hyper-V server uh, or machine running the Hyper-V role. Um, and then using SPX on that machine, we can instantly virtualize those Shadow Protect backups. Now, we've also got uh, VMware vSphere. So this came out in 2016. We launched this at VMworld, and StorageCraft actually won the gold award for the best prote data protection integration into vSphere. So with SPX 6.7, uh, it now not only supports uh, 6.0 update 2, uh, it supports update 3 and, and vSphere 6.5. So it's a lot better support for the most recent versions of vSphere. So highly recommend you look to upgrade when that becomes available to take advantage of some of those newer capabilities. Now I won't go in and demonstrate these in this tutorial. We've got separate videos available on our YouTube channel to look at the Hyper-V or vSphere virtual boot options. But this has just been a quick run through to show you some of the intuitive, some of the newer features and why SPX is a leading backup and disaster recovery solution. Thanks for your time.